What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. My name is Nord Trades and today I bring you another Sunday stock watch list. It's currently January 24th uh, and this week we actually have a full week. Last week we were missing I believe Monday uh, due to Martin Luther King but uh, we have a very action-packed week and I'm looking at a lot of things uh, and including we have a lot of uh, you know events going on such as earnings and you know GDP on Thursday January 28th and then we have FOMC announcement and the Fed chair press conference on Wednesday and you know jobless claims on Thursday obviously so first of all before we get into this video please hit that like button subscribe comment down below what other stocks I should look at I added a few from the comments in this video uh, also let me know what other videos you guys would like to see on this channel uh, I'll also be uploading a day in the life you know, something I haven't really done, uh, I believe this week or maybe next week. I'll let you guys know. But uh, screenshot this so you guys have the schedule for this week. Obviously, for the people that are very active, this is very important so you know what's going on uh, economically and all the events going on. Then we run into some earnings. It looks a little stretched and blurry just because the picture, you know, the picture is clear. But when you stretch it on the Mac, uh, it looks a little blurry. But so many earnings going on today. First of all, AMD, another semiconductor, you have 3D, you have GE, Microsoft, uh, Verizon, you know, American Express, the big boy, Apple, Tesla, Boeing, you have AT&T, you have LAM Research, which is one of the most important, well, to me, is one of the most important semiconductor companies. Uh, so I like looking at LAM Research to get the overall idea of what's really going on in the sec semiconductor industry. Then we have McDonald's, another big boy here, Visa. You got some airlines, Southwest, you had, uh, no, United was the previous week. Yep. So Southwest and then, you know, a whole other, uh, you know, a whole other group of stocks reporting here. I don't really follow any of these, but Tractor Supply, I know a lot of you guys are interested in that. Uh, and then Caterpillar, uh, Caterpillar. Uh, this is a very important company. So this will be important on Friday to see uh, what really goes on. So. Like I said, screenshot this. If you want a more clear picture, all you need to do is go to my Instagram, my trade account on Instagram, which is trade like nor on Instagram. And there's a very clear picture there. You can just screenshot from there, which is going to be in the description down below. So you have earnings whisperer. We went over the schedule and now we'll go over the stocks that we're looking at for this week of January 24th. The first thing we'll take a look at is GME. So before we start, I don't trade on the MacBook because... I trade on my PC, so there's lines and resistance support lines that are going to be weird on a few stocks like Tesla, but let's get started. GME on Friday, finished the day up 51%, a crazy short squeeze from $42 all the way up to $76. Uh, this is very interesting because uh, before this whole rally, if you go to the last 20 days, short interest on this was extremely high. It was one of the most hated stocks on the market. And the stock was basically a penny stock for the last, you know, two months. You could see, or a couple months ago, you see that $3.77 in July. And then we started pushing to $6 uh, in September. And then as you can see, now we're all the way up at $65. We closed that and hit a high of 76 So I'm currently looking at GME, see if we, we could get another, uh, you know, crazy squeeze. Are we going to get any covering? Because this is just getting out of control. Uh, and with the short interest that they have, this can easily run up to 100. So just keep an eye on GME, see any type of uh, uh, momentum that we can get this week. So next thing, momentum wise is AMC. As you can see, AMC is $3.50. We're currently in a zone where we can easily short squeeze above $4. So I'm gonna be keep an eye, I'm gonna keep an eye on this one, uh, especially if you get above $4, that'll be a very important number. We hit a high of around $3.75 on Friday uh, just because of that GME squeeze that ended up turning uh, some volume in AMC. So I'm currently watching AMC above $4 and if we can squeeze uh, any higher. As you can see, look at the volume uh, late day. So clearly low volume compared to the late day volume. Look at this. Uh, and that's just because of GME. There was no news based on AMC. It was just, you know, a squeeze on GME turned some heads to AMC. Tesla, we have an ascending triangle here. You can't really see it. It's not an obvious one. But if you look at it, like I said, these lines don't come off because I'm on the Mac, but I don't have this problem on the PC. If you can draw a line here on the one hour, you can see we have a little uptrend, and then you can draw a flat line here at 860. Let me draw it so you guys can see what I'm looking at. 
So if you draw a line here, edit properties. I'll make it a solid line so you guys can tell from the difference. So you basically have a little wedge. Uh, you can see that this thing has been consolidating for a while, but you can see that the lows are higher every time. So we obviously have a little uptrend going on, uh, but we have a flat toe or a flat top here, uh, which creates the ascending triangle. You guys get confused. An ascending triangle could break from the top or the bottom. It, it doesn't say that it's bullish or bearish. It doesn't matter until it breaks. So I'll keep an eye on that, on that see if we can get a rally or some momentum before uh, earnings, which is this week on Thursday with Apple. I believe it was Thursday, right? But I just know it was on the same day as Apple. Uh, and if we start rallying before, we can easily take off this high before Thursday if we can get a push above 860, 865, especially if we close above 860, 865. So keep an eye on Tesla, the ascending triangle going on. We also have Dash. Uh, this has been a little, uh, you know, a nice little rally the past few weeks. As you can see here, let's start on the four hour actually. So if you go on the four hour, you can see we IPO'd here. We hit a high of like 195 and then we took a dip now a down to 135.38 and then we ended up pushing uh, to a high of 221 and ever since we've been making newer lows so I'm keeping an eye on this as you can see where it looks like we're flagging here uh, you see the lows lining up and then the highs are you know lower highs so I'm looking to see if we can break up the 200 and then get that momentum again so that we can start taking off like before but obviously with this little flag, it can easily drop down to the downside. So I'm keeping an eye on both. I'm more interested to the upside. If we break, uh, I probably won't play this if we break to the downside. So I'm looking at the 200 for the upside on Dash. Next thing I'm looking at is Fastly. Fastly has a gap on the one year. We've talked about this multiple times and it finally looks like it's ready for takeoff. So as you can see, we have this gap from 107 all the way up to 120. Uh, we peaked here at 108-ish or 107 and change and then we came all the way down to 81 and then we just retested 107 again and now we're just consolidating right above 100. So a push above 107, 108, I'm looking for a nice little rally in Fastly and when Fastly catches momentum, this thing likes to run. So uh, it looks like it's ready. Obviously, we can create a little cup and handle here so we can create you know a downtrend probably back maybe under 100. That'll be healthy, maybe to down to 94 and then come back up but all i'm looking at is if we can break above 107 108 and then that's where we'll get some momentum especially when we start breaking some real numbers like 110 and then we have room to finish this gap up to 121 so fastly something that i'm looking at and it's definitely uh you know something that i hyped about because the way it moves nvidia uh intel's earnings got leaked during the day this ended up pushing the stock that same day an insane amount it pushed all the way up to like 559 and then we ended up finding out until uh you know the hackers who leaked uh their info during the day ended up getting a little bit more info than just the earnings stock ended up pulling back but for nvidia if we can end up getting a breakout above 560 i'll definitely be taking a look at this but it looks like we're back into consolidation we've been looking at this consolidation for quite a while uh, and we're back in it. So what I'm looking at is if we get above 560 We're definitely confirming that we're breaking out and we're out of this consolidation So that's all I'm looking at for Nvidia. I'm looking at the 560 break especially when we have semiconductors uh, Semiconductor earnings reporting this week such as AMD and LAM research which are both very important companies so Nvidia 560 now I'm looking at Amazon if you go to Amazon I adjusted the wedge from last time as you can see, instead of drawing it from the bottom here, I ended up keeping it right here, which made uh, a lot more sense due to the chart. So I created it right here, September 21st. As you can see, it's been hugging it. And now that we wicked right above it, we still got rejected on the top of this trend on the one year wedge. Uh, and it looks like we want to break it, but easily we have earnings this week and easily come down right back down to the bottom of the wedge. But regardless, I'm looking at the 3350 as the breakout on Amazon, the confirmation that this is actually breaking to the upside and we should see new highs very soon. Especially if earnings is you know, compelling to investors, we should definitely see above 3,500. Uh, but we'll see if this gets a run up before earnings, but due to this wedge, it's currently stuck in. Uh, we may not see that till after earnings. So Amazon 3,350 is the breakout that I'm looking for. Airbnb, if you take a look at this on the four hour, forget about this line, let me remove this. 
another one. Give me one second. You could see that, you know, we've retested this 187 level. We came down and now we're coming back up. We kind of retested that 185, 186. So I'm looking for a breakout on Airbnb this week. I might take a long position on this depending on how it breaks and, you know, what it does. But you can see we got a little flat top here. Uh, and this could be a nice breakout to the 200 area on Airbnb. So this is something to keep an eye on just like Dash. These are two recent IPOs. These like to move and their contracts move very nicely with it. Netflix just had earnings. It was uh, pretty crazy. They were up about $92 for the day. Um, as you can see though, we created due to that earnings, we have a gap from 509 all the way to 556. On Friday, it was down 2.5%, which is $14.67. Uh, while the whole market was, you know, either flat or up. And we do have a gap starting from 557-ish down to, you know, 509, 510. So if this can initiate the gap, we might have a pretty big play on Netflix. I'm not a big fan of the way these contracts move, so I probably won't play this. But it's definitely something uh, for the people that love gap plays uh, to take a look at. So from 557-ish to, you know, 509 on the one year. So that's Netflix. We talked about AMC. ZM looks like it's setting up here, but I don't think ZM can take off until we get some bad news. Uh, it was taking off for a little bit, but, you know, it took a little breather, which is perfectly fine because it looks like, you know, it's getting ready to bounce here above 400. 400 is still the number that we're looking at on ZM. If we can get above 400, uh, this is looking to break out and we can push to 420 and if we get above 420 We can start pushing back to the numbers that uh, we were looking at previously, especially because we have a gap from 430 uh, You know 434 all the way up to 460. So there's a nice little gap area on the one year uh, when Whenever ZM starts pushing we can take a look at that But first thing we need to take over is 400 before we can even look at 434. So that's ZM BYND took a breather but this looks really nice. So we've talked about this on the previous uh, the previous uh, Sunday stock watch list. It took a breather, but now we're coming back to retest that 145 level. Once we break this 145 level, this can end up pushing back up to, you know, 170. Uh, and when BYND catches momentum, this thing likes to end up, you know, when it catches momentum, this thing moves, right? It's not a slow mover at all. And it likes to move when it catches momentum. It was up $6 on Friday, which is 4.5%. Uh, it ended up finishing the day at 140 after hours, 141.92, so 142. Uh, and BYD is something that I'm uh, very much looking at. Facebook, on the other hand, we talked about the wedge breaking to the downside, but a wedge breaking down to the downside, this is a pretty big move from 275 to 244. It happened already. The next thing that could have happened to the downside was this gap. The gap never initiated and never fell down to the downside. And ever since we've been recovering, I'm looking at the 280 level on Facebook. If we can get above 280, uh, we can start building up that momentum and maybe catch some upside on Facebook. Uh, and maybe it won't be uh, bearish anymore. So in the meantime, uh, we're still right under 280. If we can break above 280, the stock will no longer be bearish to me. Uh, and maybe this can catch some momentum back to 300. So Facebook looking at the 280 level, that'll be important. Square. Uh, I was looking at that 247 level, but we've been taking a breather. Uh, is it bad that we're taking a breather? No. Uh, as you can see from the stock from $30 all the way up to 247, this stock has been on an uptrend. So it's been on a nice little smooth uptrend. Uh, obviously you can make this line, you know, a lot better and smoother, excuse me. But I drew this line very quickly, but this stock has been on an uptrend. It'll probably come down, retest that, uh, uptrend and then try to come back and make that new high but in the meantime it's not looking like we'll get that 247 break just wanted to mention that this stock is on an uptrend and it's something to pay attention to especially for people who like to take long-term plays uh if this comes back down to you know around 200 it might be something compelling to someone's long-term portfolio so square is definitely something we went through a whole lot of stocks and these are all the stocks that i'm looking at for this week for now obviously is you know, things develop, we get some news and all that good stuff. I'll add things to my watch list. But for the Sunday stock watch list, we are here. We're done. Make sure you hit that like button. I'll see you guys. Peace.